Greetings! Well, it's certainly evident that you have an affinity for pain. Why else would you be back for another episode of Vault? In today's episode, we'll be looking at another one of my favourite films, Brazil by Terry Gilliam. It is a film that is nearly impossible to categorise. It is a mixture of dystopian sci-fi, surrealist dark fantasies, satirical comedy, anarchy, and an alternate universe in which there is an overbearing government that has practically strangled society with its mixture of paranoia, crippling bureaucracy, and unreliable technology. An alternative universe. Hmm. In the world of film, some scenes etch themselves into the deepest crevices of your consciousness and in these dark recesses, they morph memory into nightmare. For me, the iconic image of Ida Lowry's outstretched face is one such scene. It haunts me deeply. In key ways, the visualization of this vulgar distortion is emblematic of all that Brazil seeks to present about the worst excesses of humanity. The incorporation of humor as a storytelling device is brilliant on Gilliam's part. The effect is both conflicting and paradoxical, and I often found myself laughing but feeling entirely hopeless in the same instance. In that regard, I think Brazil can also belong to the horror genre where freedom of thought exists only as an illusion. Choice is circumscribed by misinformation and personal agency, the ultimate crime. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Vault. This is episode 2, entitled Celluloid. Today we'll be looking at a couple of items that I managed to get my hands on during the London Film Fair in 2023. Essentially, the Film Fair is a convention that gathers together film buffs, collectors, film enthusiasts uh, into a single ballroom and, and all the vendors and the traders would showcase all the different memorabilia and products and wares and it's such a spectacle and it's really inspiring to see this film community come together with such intense passion and they were very willing not just to share their products but their stories as well and attached to each of these products so it was it was really such an eye-opener for me to have the opportunity to join this event. So without further ado, let's get to our first item. Now this is a full color art transparency acetate material from the film Brazil 1985 by Terry Gilliam. Now you can't see it very clearly because of the material so I've devised a very very technical masterful piece of technology to let you see what's it like but don't worry I'll show you some b-reels <laughs> in the meantime to get you to see how it actually looks like up close uh, but yes this is very very professional and this is very very highly sophisticated. Now typically such full color art transparencies were used to generate promotional items for the film's publicity. In this case, it is likely that this particular movie still was used to create the British quad version of the poster. Alternatively, such acetate material could also have been used for slides and overlay kind of projections where they would form the base material for the promotional items out there. Now, the image on the poster is a combination of the imagery from the flying sequences in the film and a deleted scene that was only ever storyboarded by Gilliam in which we see a dreaming Sam flying and finding himself amidst a vast wall of cabinets. It's truly, truly escapist fair. Interestingly enough, this British quad was withdrawn from cinemas because the distributor, which is 20th Century Fox, felt that the image wasn't the right one to sell to the UK audiences, and so they chose another one instead, which might make this particular film transparency even rarer. Now, at this point in time, we have come to a new segment of the video. It's called Science with Shane, Science with Shane, insert some cool graphics here. Now, if you trust me to 
talk to you about the science itself, I will probably lead you down the wrong way because the only two things I know are photosynthesis and homeostasis and even that I'm not too sure which is which. So what is acetate? <laughs> now it is an alternative to nitrate based film as nitrate based film was a serious hazard due to its combustibility and in film history they in terms of the progression, they needed to move to a safer film medium. And in the 1950s, they came up with this other thing called cellulose thiacetate film stock. And this is what most material were made at that point in time until they made a further transition to polyester film and then digital later on. Science, Science with Shane. Science. Now, an interesting story. When I bought this piece of film art from the vendor, he was explaining to me its significance in terms of how this served as the primary base material for the creation and generation of all of the other promotional items for the film, such as the posters, for instance. So naturally, this got me really excited about it. Later on, when I made my rounds around the convention, I met another vendor. And when he saw what I had, he exclaimed in excitement and in delight. And he said, whoa, this is really rare. And this is something that you don't see really often because this is something that is primary uh, rather than the final product itself. So naturally that got me even more joyful and more elated because I felt that much closer to the film and to the director and to the actors and so on because I had a piece of it. All right, we are done with our first item and now on to the second one, which still belongs to the category of celluloid. This is a Space Odyssey 35mm film cells presentation card. Same thing, we are going to use our very sophisticated method of showing you what the actual product really is. Don't worry, I'll be showing some B-reels over to explain and to show you the close-up. Alright, it's time for our favorite segment again. Science, Science with Shane. Science. Now, what is a film cell? Now, a film cell is a small transparent strip of celluloid that contains a single frame of film. Now, each reel of film typically contains thousands of frames of film. And in this case over here, we see four film frames, which is what we call a film strip. Now, these are physical representations of the film. They are tangible connections to the magic of cinema. Now, in all honesty, the film cells that you see over here, they are most probably from the trailer of the film rather than from the film itself. Does this make it less authentic? Not really. They are still authentic given that these are the same scenes that you see in the film itself. So there is still that authenticity there. And they, these film cells might be in better condition given that they won't run through the projector as much as the full-length film itself. So what collectors typically do is that they would cut out the reel or the cells from the trailer of the film and put them into nice display collector's items like this or nice cardboard. They will give the certificate of how do you do this? Yes, nice. They will give the certificate of authenticity and yeah, it, it's a nice display piece for you to put in your home uh, and it is still a part of cinematic history and cinematic art. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Vote. This has been episode 2, Celluloid. I will leave you with one of the final scenes of Brazil, which actually its working title was called 1984 and a half. The scene is poignant and without revealing too much, quite liberating. I will see you on the other side. Shane out.